Hey guys, it's Keegan here with Airview Drone Technologies, and today we're going to be covering ground control points. Without further ado, let's hop right into the episode. Alright, so what are GCP's ground control points? They are a exact point in the ground or mark that is able to improve the accuracy of our surveys or maps that we create for a job. Um, for the sake of this example, we're going to be using a square. Usually it's going to be in the shape of a square or a circle. And it's going to be roughly two foot by two foot in size. Uh, you're going to want to use highly contrasting colors for this. Uh, since it's going to be easier for your drone to pick up uh, once it's flying from an aerial point of view. Um, so if you're on a site that has high amounts of white colors, you might, you know, want to switch it around and go orange and black or green and black or whatever the mixed match of colors might be. Uh, just use highly contrasting colors that are easy to locate. So once you've got your ground control point set up, either made of cardboard or spray painted onto the ground. You will establish a center point directly in the middle of your mark you've created. And you will place your GNSS receiver on top of that point and you will gather the GPS location of that exact point. From there, you've got your first GCP. Now, Typically for a site, depending on size, you know, variability, you're going to want to use three, possibly five, even more. Since the more GCPs you have, the higher and higher level of accuracy that you will have uh, to georeference for your project. Now, it does get to a point of diminishing returns. Obviously, you don't want to have like 500 GCP set up. Typically, around five is good um, per site. So that's usually a number I would stick around. Maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less. It all depends on the project. So a couple pieces of advice for your GCP locations. You do not want them to be uh, covered by something. So let's say you've got a tree, you know, we'll just draw a tree right here. Let's say you've got a tree overhead that is blocking this ground control point from being seen by our drone, right? Bam. Now our drone cannot see the entire GCP since the tree is blocking part of it, right? This is something that you don't want since without being able to see the GCP, you're not gonna be able to utilize it fully. So always use a GCP where there is uh, no coverage above and there's nothing preventing it from being viewed from an aerial point of view. Another piece of advice is do not put it on a uh, rough terrain or curvy terrain. So let's say you've got, you know, a s slight curve in a site or wherever it might be. You don't want to put your GCP on that curve uh, just since it's going to warp it and it's gonna make it a lot harder to gather a precise location with that GNSS receiver. So another thing is the reusability of GCPs. If you're spray painting it, uh, depending on the amount of dirt and grime that is on top of whatever you're spray painting, it might wear away with time. If you're using a cardboard cutout or foam cutout and placing it on the ground, you're gonna to have to go back and get different GCPs every single time uh, since you won't be able to find that exact location every single time when you go back out to the site. Um, so depending on the company that you're working with, you might wanna use something a little bit more permanent long-term if this is something that you're gonna consistently go out for uh, and you want those exact spots. Or you could, you know, stick with the temporary. You're just going to have to reestablish those GCPs uh, once you go back out to those locations. So the great benefit that GCPs bring to you is the improved accuracy of your data collection. When you have ground control points, you're able to georeference them and create maps that will perfectly align with where they are set up. Uh, let's say you've got Google Maps for a reference. Typically when you map a site, there's gonna be a slight variation in where your map is that you gather and where the actual precise GPS locations of everything is exactly. Uh, with GCPs, you're able to establish those exact GPS coordinates and have it line up so where the entire project is seamless and in the exact location that it is in the physical world without any variations of error. Like we covered in the RTK video, there's typically a one to four 
meter degree of error uh, with typical GNSS receivers. Uh, once we use GCPs, we're able to get that down to centimeter level and establish that high degree of accuracy for our mapping on sites. Well, thank you guys for sticking around towards the end of the video. I really appreciate it. Feel free to leave a like and comment in the comment section below any future video ideas or questions you might have for us. Once again, thank you all for sticking around and stay tuned for next week's episode. See ya.